Hi, I'm Troy Halterman. I'm in Culver City, Los Angeles this morning. I'm here at the studio of Laddie John Dill. Laddie refers to his work as light sentences. Come meet Laddie. Hi, Laddie. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for having us over to look okay. at your work. Great, come on in. My father, uh, stepfather, was a, a mathematician and a lens designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was responsible for early uh, versions of uh, night vision, things like that. Mm -hmm. So my brother and I and my sister, we grew up with you know laser beams running down the hall and oscilloscopes. And, all that. and then when I started painting, I realized that the kind of color I wanted wasn't in the paint, or I couldn't get that luminous feeling. I just went back and started working with uh, uh, gases and materials, uh, thus the light pieces, or the, what I call light sentences. But also uh, the idea of a piece being like a lens is interesting to me. As you move across the piece, or just slightly, the areas that are highlighted will shift and mm -hmm. be dark. This piece is flat. I mean, it's all, it's made totally out of aluminum. What happens is uh, it's like a, a tape. It's like mi almost microscopic, it's so thin. And it's got paper on one side. We heat the metal and then lay it down so every inch of the surface is covered in these sections, you know? And uh, then trim it very carefully. Uh, and then pull, uh, heat the metal, pull the paper off, and then gently set it down. There's no wiggle room, by the way. <laughs> it took a while to figure this out, but it was all in the masking. See, this is one piece of metal. How do you achieve this veining that is happening um, in there? First, you polish it so there's no scratches. Mm -hmm. uh, just back and forth with a uh, big wheel. It's, it's like a 3M polisher heart is hard. Once there's no scratches that are visible, start to move with your body language. Neon tubes that you did early on, or are they some Those are of the first things I the did. The first things that you uh, did. Professionally. And was that 1970s? The first time I showed them was in 1971 at uh, Sonneben Gallery in New York. And one of the guys says, what do you do with these? And I said, you just look at them. And then I came back a couple of days later, and they said, we figured out what you're doing. You're selling these to people in Beverly Hills. I went to Chouinard Art Institute. When I graduated, I had to make a living. So um, the one place I wanted to work was Gemini. I felt was impossible. Gemini is a printing place, and they would print Rauschenberg, Johns, uh, Lichtenstein, Stella, uh, worked on the prints that were the colored numbers. And, so it was a very historical time for Gemini. And I made friends with all these guys. And, and then uh, because of that, uh, Rauschenberg asked me if I would do a collaboration with him. He came by the studio. I shared this studio with Chuck Arnoldi. I had this dark room <laughs> with all this sand in it, like 7,000 pounds to be exact. And uh, they offered me the show. So that was all because of Bob bringing them by. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to New York, you know, I lived in Jasper Johns' studio. I got to meet all these guys that were friends of his, like John Cage and Buckminster Fuller and Russ Cunningham, and, uh, people like that. And I asked Jasper, I, I had the luxury of sitting on the couch, a cup of coffee, and watching Jasper paint. <laughs> you know, and I asked him, I said, what, you know, you've got a lot of pieces that, you know, have found objects in them. What, what do you, what's your choice of adhesive? And uh, Jasper says, anything that'll stick in my lifetime. And then after that, it's Leo's problem. Laddie, I am such a fan oh, of your work. You. It was really that. a pleasure for me to spend okay. some time with you and hear about your process and your exquisite art. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Bye, folks.